with that, we're taking notes to strike a chord live. And with that, let us cover what we're going to cover today. Let's go over for a review, everyone. And you know me, no spoilers. We take a look back here. It's, it's notes. It's not like future predictions. I'm not Karnak here. Uh, today, we are looking at the opposite of what we were looking at yes, or last week. Uh, I told you I'd say that. So we're actually looking at the worst value quest paths. Uh, I need the Discord app. That Discord link will not work. Let me get a new Discord link. Taleb. So, like I said, today we are going over the worst value in quest packs, and I got four of them. Uh, yeah. Four of them, and we'll go in reverse order, so we'll go with number four. Now, I really hate to say this, but as long, uh, actually, I'm going to switch characters to this one, don't I? As long as older quest packs don't get updated, we're going to always have quest packs that are not going to be worth what the other ones should be, you know? Mm. i got to figure out which character to get on. Uh, just in case I go into quest, let's go on all crap. She's almost done. And the biggest one that's been hit by the whole loot not being updated thing is easily going to be Reaver's Refuge. I love the quest. Don't get me wrong. They are the four of the single greatest quests that Turbine and now Staying Stone Games has ever designed. But they are also the four quests you don't need to run. Hey Demetrius. Sadly enough, out in Reaver's Refuge, you don't need to run these quests. You run them because you want to. The problem is, is I still think they're kind of on the hefty side, point wise. And it's too bad because, in all honesty, these quests are amazing. They're, they're total maze balls. Uh, no, that's Restless Isles. Uh, uh, oh, we'll come back here. I guarantee you that. That's up for running. Oh, let's go. The I don't can't go the hard way yet, can I? Uh, I want to go into not the Soaring O-Tug. The rest of the Isles. I want the other one. And the Cyber Atoll. I'm going to take a brief look at something really quick that I need to know. You think they tell me? But they don't. Really? Well, hi, Fargonaut. 
the thing is, I just looked it up, and I can't look at this anymore. Is this really only 250 DDO points? In which case, I'd have to go on a stretch here. I'm going to put this still on the list of ones that aren't very valuable. But for 250 points, I'd say that was worth the entertainment value. You get no loot. 250 points for some really, really fantastically runnable quests per life. You can skip them, but I, I think that running Prey on the Hunter is kind of a must. Somebody, you know, you've got to do it. Monastery, I can see skipping. Uh, yeah, the Cobalt's kind of fun. But when you get down to it, you get a bunch of outdated loot. You get four small little adventure zones that all share the same kill count. You know? It... Yeah, there, and, and the biggest part is that there's only one named item in the entire thing. And that's the toothpick. And no one cares. No one ever cared. Oh yeah, praise good for that. The whole thing has a bunch of callbacks. This is really great. You know, the other ones are a lot more subtle, but it's also the only time where you gotta fight. Where well, for a while there it was the first time where you gotta fight monks. You know, all of a sudden, you know, the monks were on the monking side. It's like this is what it's like to fight us. Oh, this is crap. Okay, the frost wolves out here are really, 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 really. You think most frost wolves like to overrun their targets? They ain't got nothing on them. The adventure zones, uh, I think, I think Osiriax's Valley on the top's a little plain. But then again, it is you know a portal to Rizia, so what are you gonna do, right? So for 250 points, and you want real puzzles and real different, uh, real different missions, Prey on the Hunter and Enter the Cobalt give you that. Monastery has a lights out puzzle that's kind of a pain in the butt. Although the, uh, the, uh, what do you call it? The tile box puzzle is pretty neat. <laughs> well, thank you very much for the for the cheer and we do well you know it's pretty much the only place where we get monk on monk violence you know I, I fight clerics I fight fighters I fight and I fight everything but only I here do I fight monks which I'm kind of grateful to because you know I, I have you know, back in the early days, you know, my wife did PvP me a couple of times, and then she got death lock, and then I couldn't kill her anymore. You know, like to make it fair, you have to make your saves and not have death block. You just have to do it with saves. Well, I can get off three. I can get off three. Uh, well, I can get off a destruction and implosion and get three ticks on that and, and bring anything with death without death ward down. But you know, she gets death ward. I, I got nothing. I got nothing. So you know, like I said it's fourth place. I mean, you know, it's. It's a pack you're going to pick up when you've played everything else and want something new and different. It's not, no, I'm never getting this pack. No way. Uh, but it is probably the last pack on this list where you can say that. Everything else, I kind of think you can kind of do without. Since I'm going to go for a 3 out of 3 and I get a screen cap, I'm going to go ahead and speed up the portal.
Thank you. All right. Is it Reaver's? Is it Reaver's Refuge? It's either Reaver's Refuge or Reaver's Reach. Uh, one or the other. I right, just looked it up. I guess I could look again, right? Mm, you better lay in. Reaver's Reach. It is the Reach. Reaver's Reach is the pet quest back. And like I said, I love it. I, I I love it, but I have everything, so I can I can I can I can afford to love the weak ones, you know. If you're just starting out, you can't go VIP. You only got you're on a lever, you're on a limited income. Yeah, you're probably going to skip the reach. Let's go, a bunch of friends who love to run it. I usually run. If I can get into a group, I definitely run into the Cobalt, and I always run uh, Prey on the Hunter, usually to cap if I don't have a, if I don't have an adventure area clear out. I definitely run the adventure zones here, though. They're pretty, they're pretty short, pretty good XP for what they are, pretty quick XP for what they are. It's not like you're running all over Minic Terran for crying out loud. I love Minotaurin. I think, God, there are that many explorer zones. But dear, if you took half of them away, I'd never step foot in it. It's too, it's too, it's too big. It's muy grande. It's, it's, it's very, very big and very, very out of the way. There's too much to get that last one to get the core of Lely out. That's a, that's a lot of backtrack. Uh, you see, you, you, you might not be surprised uh, to love because uh, number three, well, if they hadn't, if the, I guarantee you this would have been number one if they hadn't updated the loot about, what, six years ago? But number three, still on this list, is going to be Sorrow Dusk Isle. We gotta get out there first. Sorrow Dusk Isle is very sorrowful. I ain't, I ain't doing that whole spoiler thing. That's about as far as I want you to go. Okay, so it's it's muy gigantico. That's fine. We'll leave it at that. Um, but I'm not doing the I'm not doing the charm preview thing. I want to be want to be surprised on day one. You know, that's me. That's, that's my thing. So uh, I, I, that was my whole shtick with uh, Lord of the Rings Online. Was hey, I'm experiencing it for the first time. Come and join me. I got no viewers with that. Anybody wanted to ask questions? So, okay, well, I'll go back to where I can answer questions. <laughs> I know you were. I'm just, you know, you got to fill time. You know, you can't stream and just sit there and be like, you have something doing, whether it's playing, like, French rock. I'm not saying I know anybody who did that today. Trilogy. Yeah, nobody I know. It was good stuff. I'm not. I'm not, I'm not making fun of your trilogy. It was, it was good stuff. I just, you know, you weren't talking, so I didn't say anything. Yep. All right, Sardis guy. Well, what are its what are its problems? Well, the problem is even with the loot update, it's terrifically mediocre. Um. Yeah. Most of the stuff is like really niche loot. Like, you know, I mean, there are some things that people get, like the mummified bat for the feather fall and the jump, and the bubble belt for the swim and the. I think it's swim and. Uh, underwater breathing, and I can't remember the spell's name. Yeah, well, that's what it does have going for it is the, well, the XP's, I think the XP's only okay. Every time I run it, and even at level, I always think I should be getting a little bit more. Um, there, and it comes in, uh, each quest comes in two stages, where it's the super quick run with for almost no loot. 
and then all right i'm sorry no xp and then the grindy one where you go through the whole thing and it, so the first one you just really want to get in and out and then the second mission is always the one where it's all like every new nook and cranny and break area. the first one you don't break everything you don't break anything because all the other things count so usually like i said when i do the first one it's literally i'm here i'm gone uh, however, you know, the second run is usually fun. They could really kind of just, they could actually drop four missions on this and bump up the XP and make it really good. You put the first one in the second one, the first quest one in the second one. Yeah. I almost always do the adventure zone because I think the advent the wilderness out here is kind of fun. I can go back in those two. I've already got... Oh, I haven't got all the rares. Now let's go back and see if we got the rares. Might as well. Why not? What else am I saying? Yeah, it's got... Uh, the other thing it's got going for it in the wrong category is it's ancient and boring quest design. It's literally do the mission, do the do this dungeon, and then do, do this dungeon again with more stuff. Except for uh, Cold of the Six, where it's do all this mission, do all this dungeon, and then go back and only do a little bit of the dungeon. They, 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 that's the big switch up, and it ain't enough of a switch up for to hold my interest much. Like I said, if they axed the short mission and expanded the long mission just a little bit, I think it would be a lot more fun to play. So you go in, you free Achka, then you go ahead and go in and go deeper. Then you fight off what's his name and the trolls. It's kind of fun with Dedor. Especially when you have to go back for the second mission, you just Dedor. You, you go back to Bruku and then you Dedor back to where you came out of, so that helps. Of course, how many characters have Dedor? Humans with enough feats to take the dragon mark. Warlocks. Yeah, that's, that's what I was just saying, Demetrius. Um, but I, I'd like to add them for them to add more stuff. More optionals, too. Even if you don't pump up the base, put all the all the stuff from the first one in this or in that you in the one that you drop and put it in the new expanded quest as an optional. Yeah, and optionals are optional. Yeah, a lot of the early quests are going to feel like the XP are a little low. I mean, when they redid Three Barrel Cove, it kind of expanded everybody's idea of what XP should be. I think maybe Three Barrel Cove took it a little bit too far. Um, there's some quests in there where you, you literally level five is now four quests in Three Barrel Cove and skip, even on Third Life. It's just like, that's level five. You're done. Or, I'm sorry, level seven. Level seven. Level seven is, is four. Each quest is basically a bubble, and then you're done. You're done. It's over. So sorry, Chubby. I, it's been a long time. Usually I just do three row cove and maybe two out of Necro 1 and I'm on to the next step. I don't do Fairlane Carnival. I cannot remember the last time I did Fairlane Car Carnival at level. I save I save it for a good epic first run. I don't I don't run it. Oh. The, the, the strong point of Sorrow Dusk Isle here is the, the Wilderness Zone. It, it, it is one of the better Wilderness Zones. Um, the rare encounters can be a little rare. <laughs> Usually you only get three, maybe four of them per run. We've gotten what? Two? Yeah, two. We're, we're doing okay. We're ahead of the game. If I got two more, I would consider that to be a good run. Oh, and it's very, very attractive. I think the Adventure Zone is far more attractive than any of the individual dungeons. 
the temple's got a couple of things going for it, but... Hmm, Scorpion King isn't here. No, Dwayne the Rock Johnson. Uh, like I said, the loot is still... It's better than it was, and it can be useful for somebody who's first time playing, but boy... Is it, you're not going to use it past level 10. You're going to go do Ravenloft. You're going to get all your stuff from Ravenloft. You, know, you can usually go three levels with some nice Tear of the Con loot. And not have to worry about this. The biggest problem, though, with this is, of course, the level range. My god. That level range. Uh, in today's thought of adventure pack, it's not like you're going to go do one or two quests in this adventure pack and one or two quests in that one. You know, you're going to do that adventure. You're here, you're there, you're going to do it. But that's not really an option for Sardis now because the level range is literally 6 to 10. Uh, it has as wide of a level range as Tingle Root Gorge. Hmm. Without the good parts of having decent loot waiting for you at the end. Um, and at that point, you're really getting into the good stuff. So, like, you're not going to sit there at level 10 and go do Vault of Night and then think, oh, well, i got to go back to Sardis Isle and finish it. No, you're going to sit there and you're going to finish Vault of Night. You're, you're not going back. It's not an option. It would be silly to go back. So the other thing they would need to do is compress it into... A level. I would recommend eight. Mm, no, nine's, nine's a little shorter because then it's competing against Threnal. And while I didn't put Threnal on this list, um, because Threnal has some, like, fantastic loots still after all this time, uh, you know, if you're going to compete with something, you might as well compete with something that people don't like because of one mission, you know, you might as well. So like, well, we could have a good time and go play Sarah Dusk Isle, or we can go bang ourselves against the wall that is Thrunnel. You know. Those beholders in Thrunnel can be tough, and then of course the coil fight. Even though that is not fail now, it's still not that. But Sarah Dusk, you know, if you're doing it at level and you're running Bravery Bonus and you want to get it exactly at the right time, it's always come and go, come and go. And you, know, you can try to plan it so you do, you know, I'll finish six and then roll to seven. But then you still have to leave and go back and train up and then come back and do it. So it's still always a bit of, I'm going to come, I'm going to go. It's worse if you're holding levels. Because if you're holding levels, you have to go train when you're done with the, you know, once you hit your level, it's time, you know, you're, you're, you're capped. Cap. At least if you're not holding levels, you can go ahead and hold that level for a little bit. It makes it a little easier. But otherwise, it, it doesn't have a flow. There's no flow here. Oh, did I get, what's his name? Yeah, I got Thanalin. I didn't have Thanalin. Nice. Sounds like a type of lotion. The one thing I do like about one of the thing, neat things here, I'm going to show you. Most of you probably know this, but if you're in the adventure area, there's one guaranteed rare sate back here. What you have to do is kill all the whites. Do 
Kill all the whites, then the three specters will appear. Kill the three specters. And state will appear, and then you kill him for his loot. All right, number two. Somebody stole my thunder. We're going out to the Restless Isles. The Restless Isles are just... They're the Restless Isles. So how else am I going to put this? This is... This quest almost made the worst pack. There are... What? Two heroic quests. That's all you get. Technically, technically, hiding in plain sight is part of it, but you get it free. You don't need the pack to be able to do hiding in plain sight. You get a pre-raid, a pre-raid which will, you need a minimum of four people to do, a bare minimum. And then you do a raid. And the worst part about the pre-raid is a lot of the times you don't know. It's very hard to train for because there are a lot of things that somebody just has to go out and do all on their own. You know, and if you're not that one person doing it, maybe two, the rest of the party doesn't see what's going on. How do you train for that? How do you train? I mean, you can read about it, but there's no, nothing you can really much do. The raid, I thought, was a bit boring. But it was... Well, the pre-raids used to be, like, the real big things. And then... The raids themselves were like a huge boss monster. The Titan, the Demon Queen, Vila. And so it's an old raid in that style. And, you know, I understand that. But it is still... I, I don't know. For me, with new raids being so fact full of things, it, it seems a little on the... On the boring side, I guess. I mean, the Vila Raid's probably the most interesting. Because everybody goes out there, and you take down the crystals, and then you go back inside, and it's okay. You know, you big big fight against, big beat down against Vila. It's kind of fun. Um... Demon Queen, not so much so. And then the Titan Raid is the worst. Just the worst. One guy goes in, leads the Titan. Other guy throws the switch. Literally, that's it. Nothing else to be done. What are you going to do? Every Titan Raid I ran, I ran six or seven of them. It's all like, okay, everybody hang from this ladder while we go, while us two people go do it. If two people can do it, it's not a raid. If two people at level can do it, it is not a raid. And so the, twi uh, the, the Twilight Forge raid is the worst. Just the worst. It, it's got a better story than Defiler of the Just. And Defi Defiler of the Just gets bad marks for me because as a raid, it's boring. I mean, there's no real raid mechanic other than beat everything. We're going to... I thought I got it. Didn't I pick it up? Oh, well. I really thought I picked it up. The other thing about it is the two quests are long. Oh, my Lord. At level 10. Oh, my God. Oh, do they end? No, they do not. They do not end. They do not end. They do not end for you here. They do not end for you there. 
with a Titan, you'll be trapped inside of your underwear. I don't know. It, it's just not good. No, I didn't get it. Oh, and the other thing I hate. You cannot get all the explorers in the zone without doing an optional and a quest. I hate that. I hate that. It's like in Lotro where they hide some of the deeds inside of like fellowship areas. It's like, no! Deeds should be massive endeavors for one person to accomplish by themselves. Likewise, an explorer zone should not be gated behind a quest that you have to be on the very edge of the explorer area's XP cap to do. I'm not saying this makes me angry, but it pisses me off. All right, well, that's another Twilight Forge. I don't actually have to go anywhere for the next one. Let me double check, make sure I got the right one. Yep. I got it right. What is the number one worst value pack in all of DBO? Well, this might surprise you, but at four uh, at 450 DO points, the one I kind of don't, I don't ever play this at all. I, I, I play one mission in it. No, I don't. I don't even do that. That's right. I play the other one. What is it? What could it be? Believe it or not, it's in the 12. It's in the 12. It's level 17. I never, ever run them. I, I ran them with Bokfagor the first time, the first time in... That'd be a good solid three years. This quest line. Reign of Madness. Reign of Madness is my my least favorite. I think it's the worst value. I'm gonna go ahead and step into Lord of Stone on normal. I don't really don't care. Uh, you've now pretty much seen all of uh, Lord of Stone. Yeah, you're going to need to. Uh, like this quest, most of them are long and boring and confusing. You go in, you beat up some gargoyles. And this mission is tremendously long. You have no idea how long this mission can be. And it's mostly just running through relatively empty corridors, really. This is like the biggest fight for a while right here. These quests were really uninspired. Um, there's no real decent loot. There's a Warhammer in this one that's okay-ish. Uh, a lot of people like the Shard of Zoriat.
Uh, you forget I am a Bard Fargonaut. I like the Beholder drinking game. And I wasn't sure that... I wasn't sure Delirium was free. I thought Delirium came in a pack. But this is the one where you have to assemble the be the airship out of the beds. It's very solo unfriendly. So you have this quest, which is long and boring and looks the same. And then you have Acute Delirium, which is very solo unfriendly and a little bit silly, which is okay. It's probably the most interesting of them. Then you have Sane Asylum with that terrifically hard puzzle in the middle and the constant back and forth through the maze-like asylum itself and the confusing way where, you know, one little mistake loses you the optionals for left eye and right eye and I gotta go up. And then the capstone quest is a little bit of fun, but why would I play it when I can at level 17 I can get four quests of fun instead of just one? Why, why would I want to do why if I'm gonna get no loot out of it anyway? And let's face it, I'm not. Why would I, if I'm going to do quests for fun, why wouldn't I want to do four fun quests instead of one and a half? Oh, Delirium and Acid Wood are free? Okay. I like the idea of all the Deliriums. It's just I think Acute Delirium is just... Like I said, it's just so bloody, so unfriendly. I mean, I really haven't hit what I would consider to be a recognizable checkpoint. A red boss, a red name boss or anything. I'm not even to the, uh, see, I got to a point in every turn and I still haven't got a red, you know, put a red name guy before then. Oh my God, I cannot believe, you know, I'm doing this for you guys. This is boring, you boring me to tears, really. I'm, I want to like, I want to do anything else. I want to run pies in the Shire. I think I just traumatized the wife. No oh, pie running. See, the first Delirium I thought was fun. Delirium 1 and Terminal Delirium is the best. Terminal Delirium is one of my all-time faves. You put up, you put up a... Uh, a heroic or an e, e uh, uh, terminal delirium run. You have got you have got my bard's attention. Dance party. You betcha. Oh, you know I'm there. And the first delirium I f I found really great fun. This one, if I've got a party, it's okay, but if I'm doing it alone, it is literally like pulling teeth. And trust me, I know. I've done that all by myself in an El Segundo Denny's in 1997. And it wasn't pleasant. See, we're finally to the first checkpoint. There are two more to go. And I'm at level 30 doing this. And then there's going to be a big open rune. Okay. You have to pick it out. And I don't have any... And it doesn't have any chests, apparently. Uh, I, th I thought this one did. 
So I, I'm already into this in level 30, and I ain't got no loot. said I just cannot not stand this quest I'm not gonna finish it I'm going to just recall right here I'll get some flesh renders just for the monster manuals I, I, I'll do this on Elite with a higher later. I just, yeah. So in all honesty, those are my picks for the worst, worst value. If anybody would like to, like, you know, hop on and talk, whatnot. Uh, the link is down there. Oh, I'm not even in. I should be there. Ha <laughs> ha ha and I'm not not even on the right one. <laughs> you just realize there is a not missing. I don't know about not missing. I know there's missing. There, I put the stuff into the list. Or is it a new thing that's going to come out? No, it's not. That, that one's not. I would, I would say a, acute delirium is nowhere near as fun as regular delirium. I would put them in the order of terminal delirium, delirium, and acute delirium, with uh, acute, or terminal being the best. Almost every other quest has something going out for it. Like I said, I just can't stand those quests. I kind of like the light gravity in Lord of Eyes. But I can get that somewhere else. It doesn't have particularly great XP. It doesn't have particularly great favor. And like I said, I can for 200 points less, I can go to Reaver's Refuge and run quests that are actually interesting. And in all honesty, Scorpion and and and. Uh, Cobalt still have relatively decent XP. Prey's a little on the light side, but Prey makes up for it for being relatively quick and a hell of a lot of fun. The thing that Prey reminds me a lot of, it reminds me as a more complicated version of Offering a blood, that's it. Offering a blood out in Minic Terran. You know, basically because it's like you're trying to achieve little objectives, but since it's all the all the enemies respawn, it's really about running on, just keeping keep keeping the party moving. And I don't think there's enough quests like that. There's basically two. I can't think of any other quest where it's all like, we've got to go now. I could be a later show where we could talk about just the most interesting quests. Just the most interesting ones. I would love to hear from everybody. I mean, everybody kind of knows their favorites, but... There's always, you know, the ones that you also like just because they're 
they're different or they're weird or they got that one thing you really like. Pray for me. I love. I I know my wife hates them. But I love the changeable mazes. I get a kick out of leading prey on the hunter uh, runs because I have such a good way of doing that. Ma those two mazes. It's kind of my thing. It's kind of where my welcome to Cavstar joke. How can we help? You know. Scanning your possible destinations. I would do the egg thing, but I don't think I have any blessings of a traveler on anybody anymore. I think I threw them all away. I really thought it would never come back. I could check, I guess. I, I was really surprised to find that out. Of course, you know, I cleaned everything out, you know, when I was out of work back in January and then think, oh, they'll never run this again. I think they do it on purpose. Anybody have any questions? Anything that you have to say, I'd love to hear from it. You can type it or you can chat about it. I don't know much care which. I don't see any tokens of the traveler on Alcrat. Oh uh, yeah. I know I threw them away on all my other characters. Yeah, that's why actually one of the better free quests is, is the Tower of Frost was pretty nifty. Um, I got my epic whirling words on a casual run. It, it made my wife really angry because we had been trying to grind it. and We were doing like, you know, we even tried an EE run with, with our guild members and couldn't pull anything. And then the next morning I just woke up and did it on epic casual and it was all like, here you go. And I'm all like, well, that was underwhelming. I got three or four of the amulet. I don't remember what the amulet is. Is it saying I don't have the amulet? What am I doing? It's over here. Stupid thing. Utilitarian necklace. Utilitarian necklace. Oh, the Con 12 one. Oh, wait, I have one of those. Never mind, I do. I only used it on one character, though. Until Ravenloft dropped, I had it on McIntyre. I think I actually ate it. I actually think I fed it to a McIntyre sword. Because I had con 19. Why would I need it? I, I just kind of ran out of room and I think I ate it. Huh. Just kind of looking around to see if she hasn't done anything yet. I think I did a, a good favor run on her. How far up did she get? Oh, she got pretty far. Yeah, all the way up to 11s. I'm going to do the enemy within. That's a good place to hunt for lodestones. You know, a lot of these free quests are really, really good, though, you know? I mean, some are super hard. Invaders is still pretty hard at level. 
Relic of a Sovereign Pass is fun. I really wish you could keep... Uh, I wish you could Glamour Tessius, though. That's a good-looking sword. Some of the free quests are better than some of the paid quests. That Tower of Frost, I'd have to say, if you're an artificer, is a must-need. Whirling Words is probably the best non-raid rune arm you can get. I have a bees one on somebody. Hmm. Sorry about that. What's the bees one called? Something of madness. Probably. Oops. I got me there. Machination of Madness, that's what it is. It says it's Knife Shot 6, but it isn't. Yeah, I love the books. I also want Knives Internal because it actually had Knife Shot. I do like the B Shot, too. I like that, that gift somebody made where instead of a car, Oprah Winfrey is giving away bees. That's what I thought about. I have a friend whose last name is Bees, too. So I give him that herb. I have some herb, man. Herb Bees. Bees! Almost all my lightning artificers have a Moo Ray's Fire. I need to get one over on Argo, though. Yeah, yeah, they were talking about that. That's one of the few ones I got spoiled on by a certain somebody who loves Cobalt. But yeah, it, it, apparently it's it's Cobalt inspired and it fires gar flaming garbage. I love all the little, you know, like what do you call it? Ooh, it didn't work. Like, what do you call them? Urban legends. So game legends. Like if you could get up to that aqueduct, there's a plus five tome that randomly spawns up there. That was a big one on Kyber back in the day. You could jump all the way up there and get on top of that 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 aqueduct there. You could get a plus five tome. Oh, like, mm, no, you can't. Pull on my chain. Oops, almost made it up there. Somebody said that there was a way to get on top of that one over there, and you could get a bobble, a trinket you could craft or something. I don't remember all the urban legends. I just remember some. I mean, the only one that really kind of was fun to play around with was the extra chest if you hit the exact center of the thing in, in uh, Shroud. Always get the first runner to do it. Oh, I know with Featherfall you can get on that ledge over there. There's nothing there. It's just kind of fun to get to. 
It's a lot harder to get up to where you can see the outside of the Cerulean Hills. You know, I haven't really checked out the boat. I'm going to check out the boat before we end. And I go get some water and play some Rocket League. Yay! Wednesday night's all right for Rocket League. I do like how they're able to change what you see if you've completed stuff. Like, obviously, um, you can tell right now I'm not done with Harvey, or with the uh, Age of Rage one because the light's off. Oh, I see. So it's got like this sail sail that goes around. It comes up and down when the water elemental ring is off. When it's down, it's it control. That's pretty cool. That's really nifty. This is a really cool design for the boat. I love it when people have like these things for fantasy ideas and then they make them work. Although I do have a problem that there's no real true helm. Yeah, and, and it's just a good design, too. I mean, you know, it's all like, well, if you're going to do a boat that's also with an elemental ring, how would you do it? And you'd put it in, you'd make a curved mast and have the sail drop down. And the curved mast acts as the elemental, part of the elemental control ring. This is brilliant. Like I said, no, it needs a true helm. I like the back of it too. Kind of that scalloped clamshell like rear deck, creating an overhang for the aft galleys. The prow's not too bad either. I would have probably made it look a little bit more mechanical up front right here. But, you know. I like the... I don't know, is that a swan? It looks like a swan-ish. Golden swan kind of bow castle. Maybe it's a peacock. Yeah, I can see a little bit. I can see a little bit of the sail barge to it. A little. I mean, it's a lot different than anything we've seen in the harbor yet. Even though boats come and go or get moved around. Then of course there's the sky boats. I don't see anyone in the sky yet, really, right now. Huh. All right. Well, if we have nothing left to say, I am going to call it a night. And I hope to see everybody on Saturday night for Bard Life. Uh, I don't have anything better to do over the Easter weekend until about 9 a.m. on Easter Day. Where I, oh, I've got to tell, i got to tell my sister that I have to buy some soy riso so I can eat. I can't have the regular chorizo, it puts up my gut too much. And I hope to see everybody next week where we're going to be talking about pets. It's going to be the big pet spectacular. I should have done it this week when I had it off, but I also want to try to arrange maybe to have even note drop in. Video even. Because I know she's got like all the pets. And I know she's not on Kyber, so we might have to go to Thalanis for her to show off and talk about her pets and whatnot. But. Oh, come on. If I had Featherfall, I could make this. Uh, there we go. Get out here and see the Cerulean Hills.
They actually show a little bit of the road running out there. <laughs> yeah, you're right. I would I would have liked to have seen more moons. I'd like to have them have a moon cycle where anywhere between one and eleven of them can appear in the sky. We're recommending that Cordovan, uh, you know, Cordovan decided to do the shroud in real life. He's, he's basking in the power of his brand or his new to him eclipse. I guess he got a Mitsubishi eclipse. I do like how the airship's doing this come and go. It's great. Like airplane watching. All right, guys, so I'll see you next week. Um, peace and good questing. Really, that's all I got left to say. Yeah, I have read the Everon lore. Yeah. All right, guys. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, well, I'm just going to call it a stream with that. And I hope everybody has a good time, and hopefully Sean will be out, like, about, well, what, one or two weeks. So... Looking forward to that. Hopefully we'll see you on Saturday. Have a great night.